<laughs> hey guys, welcome to Nook Talk. Uh, this week I have Amy from Botanist and Barrel. Uh, so we're gonna go through a tasting, let you know what they have to offer. Uh, hope you get really excited about this. So without further ado, let her introduce herself and tell us about Botanist and Barrel. Thanks, Cameron. Um, we are a small family owned winery and cidery in Cedar Grove, North Carolina, which is about three, two and a half, three hours from Morganton. Um, near the Triangle, uh, 30 minutes from Durham, Chapel Hill area, and we make fun, dry, good for you, uh, sour ciders, barrel aged ciders, and wild fermented ciders. So we're going to start today with some sparkle of my eye. The majority of the ciders that we make are still. Cool. And, uh, but we do some, when we do sparkle things, we do either a bottle condition style, um, which is more natural and a, or a pet nut style, which is also called uh, the ancestral method, which we'll, we'll get to a little bit later. <laughs> For sure. But uh, this first one you're gonna, we're gonna try is called Sparkle of My Eye. It was a big hit. It just came back in stock this week. We just re-released it. Um, it's made with um, some cider yeast from White Labs and then bottle conditioned with our house cider blend. Is that the English cider yeast, uh, or is it mm. a different one? I don't know, actually. I okay. mean, it's just White Lab cider yeah. yeast. Yeah, okay. Because I had something similar when we had the homebrew store, um, and got great results with it, so. Nice. It's super tropical. It's very, um, has a lot of stone fruit, citrus notes. Um, oh, yeah, really, stone fruit. I love really that, good. like, really fresh, kind of, like, almost, like, lemon pop that you first hits your tongue when you, when you try it. That's, like, a perfect, like... I mean, all the time, like all around cider, but like even for the summer, like really relaxing. Like I could drink this on the beach all day. <laughs> and this one's, I think this is 9%. We've made it twice now. I think one time it was eight. I think it usually comes in around 9%. So another thing, our cider is a little bit higher alcohol. Mm -hmm. So we ferment till there is absolutely no sugar left. So that's usually going to cause the alcohol to be a little bit higher, whereas some cideries would um maybe add water or try to keep it under seven percent for tax purposes or... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we like that alcohol so we just go ahead yeah just go for it i mean all the ciders that are made i think they're all around like that last batch actually i think you tried the uh the hibiscus the right hibiscus there? yeah i think that was around nine nine percent so it was very botanist style yeah so that one turned out really great um, so I was super excited. Um, glad y'all liked it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Linda loved so, it. So yeah. Um, if y'all will excuse me one minute, I've got some customers. I'm gonna leave you here with Amy and let her continue <laughs> just talking about some few things and I'll be right back. Right. So we have a couple different styles. This is our wild fermented style. This is our new bask in the glory cider. Um, so this is where we don't pitch any yeast and we just let it rip with whatever's going on in our cidery and then we bottle this in primary fermentation where it still might have a tiny bit of sugar left but this one really we, we wanted to wait till it had basically no sugar left and we wanted to make a true bass style cider so this is true sour cider um, completely wild fermented and really tasty and delicious hopefully Cameron can come back and get some. <laughs> but he just had quite a few customers come in. <laughs> I think. <laughs> so this is one of my favorite styles. We um, also make a Petalant natural cider called Less is More in the same style, where we would bottle a little bit earlier in primary. So leaving a little tiny bit of sugar, and that's what actually makes it naturally ferment. This is also called the ancestral method, which is the oldest form of making sparkling wine. They, I'm sure they did it by accident um, when they were making wine and bottled some wine with a little bit of sugar in it, and that's how you naturally would carbonate it. So, yeah, you're back. Cool. Okay, <laughs> so this is our Bask in the Glory Wild Ferment. Made in the ancestral methods. I was just explaining about the difference between ancestral and okay, um, which is a, another 
way of saying pencil on natural and the French term. And this one's amazing. Basically, we just don't touch it. It's just yeah. natural and delicious. That's the other thing that we don't we don't painting. do we don't add anything. Mm -hmm. So we don't add any sulfites. We don't add any sorbate. No, no chemicals. Nothing unnatural. Everything is completely natural, similar to natural wine, because um, we want our cider to feel good for your body, and for you to feel good later. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just that, that's exactly what I like. It's so like every cider I've had from y'all, it's like always been this super like just like fresh and I guess earthy like in a sense that like a funky yeah like and I mean like that was always my favorite thing like my favorite beer when, when I used to work for Fauna was the Beats Rhymes in Life because it tasted like dirt like it tasted like it was a beat plucked out of the ground yeah. and I mean honestly the the strawberry haze we had last time was just like that like it tastes like dirt <laughs> but it tasted like a fresh plucked strawberry which I know a lot of cideries you know, when they do add all those chemicals and all these other things, or even artificial sweeteners, you get Yeah, that. or just additive, yeah, yeah, additives in general that are not natural, maybe, or powders, or... Yeah, and so that's where you get, like, that, kind of that sticky, syrupy... Fakey taste. Fake, yeah, fakey. <laughs> fakey, is what call it. I like that. <laughs> we like things to taste real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um... So next, I'm going to pour you, uh, this is actually an experimental cider that we did, so there's no label. <laughs> it's, a, it's a Brett fermented um, house cider, so we actually just kegged this only, and it is our emanation apple, but Brett fermented. Okay. And so this is a little bit, our fermentation typically takes 60 to 90 days, which is a really long time. Uh, we're look, we were looking for a yeast that would ferment a little bit faster because it may or may not be canning later this year and we need something that we can kind of speed up the process and yeah. not make it so expensive for us to make <clears throat> um but now could you when y'all do canning um with brett and the different i know y'all obviously are use wild yeast and stuff a lot would brett be different for that or would you have to um so Brett, this is just a type of yeast. Brett is a yeast. Yeah, yeah. It just like eats the. It just it's the fastest, like one of the faster yeasts to ferment. I'm sorry, I'm not really sure if I really understand your question. No, I was just saying because like I know with like a lot of like some of the other breweries I know with like Fauna and some of the other guys, like if they used a Brett or like some some breweries, I would get a keg. It would be like Brett only. So they were like hyper vigilant on the Brett strain. So I didn't know if that was like something y'all had to account for, or like if it's something you thought about. Like on the line, like yeah, line? yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. We haven't really had that much problem. I think bread and beer is different from bread and cider. And yeah, that's probably true. Yeah, I'm, I'm and, still um, fairly new to cider, so. And we've never had any trouble like having yeah that problem. It's cool. Really getting the bread in the line or whatever. Um, so yeah, that's like really cloudy funky, so that's mm -hmm. that's in keg right now. Um, I like that a lot. That's like really smooth mouthfeel. It's really a pineapple-y, and I've gotten yeah. a couple of people say it has like some sake notes to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I was kind of thinking. Like that was actually... Yeah, my husband's like in love with that. Lyndon was like, it's all about that Brett yeah. cider. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, it's <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I, I like the wine yeast. We use a lot of wine yeast typically. I'm a wine drinker. Yeah. And, so our regular house cider is made with wine yeast, and that is uh, really yummy. More, more my style. It's more, more my husband's style, apparently. We've got something for everybody. So this next one is also a cider that's um, almost out. It's a sample. We'll, we don't have labels. We haven't printed the labels yet. This is um, plum cider, and it we painstakingly... Uh, Process 2,000 pounds of plums at the winery Ooh. with I think like four of us and some good friends that came out to came out to help because I don't know how we would have gotten it done <laughs> otherwise because my husband not only ordered 2,000 pounds of plums that weekend he ordered 2,000 pounds of apricots and 2,000 pounds of cherries so that needless all had to say to get our hands were like raw and <laughs> I'm like That's if you ever do that again I'm going yeah. to kill you. <laughs> Yeah, I think the the worst thing I think I ever experienced, what was it, the um, 
Oh, what is that? It's a type of like grain, but for gluten free. I cannot think of the name off the top of my head. It starts with an S. I'm sure y'all know what I'm talking about. I can't remember the name of it, but like Fauna had me do some, and it was like I had to toast it, but like you had to break each individual like husk off or something oh, of these things. And like terrible. I just had scissors, so I was like cutting these things off and then scraping them. And, oh. and then I had to go toast like a couple hundred pounds of this, but you could only do like five trays at a time. Whoa. Yeah, it was That's awful. <laughs> this oh. smells intense and awesome, by the way. Like, the I'm pretty excited that. about this. This juice raw was delicious it was super sour and tart i actually thought this was going to turn out to be a little bit more sour and but it's you're trying it right now and it's not quite finished bottle finishing mm -hmm. so it'll probably be done in, in about a week okay um like i said the bottles are not released yet just um we're releasing the kegs next week that really tastes like you just bit right into it like fresh ripe plums. yeah, yeah that's like incredible these beautiful tiny little plums i guess they're too small for to sell so they like they sell them to oh the just for food. probably okay yeah um but yeah, they were delicious. And then we've got Montmorency cherry coming that we processed also. Thankfully, we actually used the wine press for the cherries because trying <laughs> to fit 2,000 pounds of cherries, I can't even, I mean, yeah. it, was, it was, we saved the cherries for last because that was smart, I don't know. <laughs> uh, and we were all like done processing food after 4,000 pounds <clears throat> um, of apricots and plums. But yeah, the apricot and the Montmorency cherry will be coming out probably by February. Sweet. Um, and then, We've got some more bubbles. So this is another bottle condition style cider. So we try to bottle condition um, naturally with either just using some more juice um, or I've even, I wanted to start playing with some honey and maple syrup as well. This is sparkling sour blackberry cider. So this is actually going to be on tap here at the Nook. Yep. Um, it's in a still style, um, the one that's going to be on tap. This one is sparkling. Okay. And this is a, a serious oh sour cider. We add a, the only thing we ever add is malic acid, which is the natural um, acid in apples. Yep. Makes sense for cider. So we, we usually use that to drop the pH a little bit, make it a little bit more sour and... Here you have it, sparkling yeah. sour blackberry. I mean, and I think that one, that's, a lot of sour cider is not typically as sour as sour beer, but this one, I think, would definitely fall in It would definitely hold its own against, I think, sour any, beer ca yeah, category. any sour beer, like. Yeah, a lot of refreshing, and then you got that nice, like, kind of tart punch on the back end. This is a super rare one for us, and it actually is the oldest thing we've ever made. Oh, cool. <laughs> so this is probably um, close to two years old um, in bottle, and uh, it's our organic blueberries because we uh, our Cedar Grove Blueberry Farm is where our cidery is located. Um, so in the summer, you can come you pick blueberries, and then how big is that farm there. actually? Like um. We own about four to five acres, okay. and then my husband's family owns another 99 acres behind uh, the blueberries. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, the blueberries are actually divided between us and my husband's mother, and so we own about two acres, and she owns two acres of blueberries. It was two properties that were divided that okay. um, she bought the 99 acres, and then we bought this other property that had uh, a 10,000 square foot warehouse on it where we put our tiny little 2,000 square foot winery tasting room <laughs> and uh, yeah it all worked out because we, we joined the properties back together how they were supposed to be and we started as a blueberry farm so we were just a U-Pick farm and I've been in wine my whole life and, yeah. and uh, my husband. So going into cider, Yeah, your we husband like, was more in cider right? Um, no he was in the wine business too actually. Okay. He uh, started Sour Grapes Distributing which is a wine distributor in, in North North, South Carolina, and Georgia. Okay. And then he quit that to start Botanist and Barrel when we decided we were going to make cider and fruit wine and get weird. <laughs> <laughs> but this is over a pound of blackberries per bottle or over five pounds per gallon of whole um, 
blackberries we co-fermented with the apple cider. And then we also, this is part of our fusion series, which in fusion series, we always, it's usually the dominant fruit, which in this case, it's blueberries. Then we have 10% grape. This is a Niagara grape. Wow, that and then the base is a uh, cider. But we actually label this wine because there's when there's more fruit than the cider, I I like to label it wine like fruit wine. Oh, okay. Um, but you could call it either. It's kind of this weird hybrid category. The it's color is just absolutely insane. Fruit wine cider, yeah. fruit cider. But this is, uh, so our organic blueberries and then we, just to get super weird, we decided to hop it with some citra hops. And because blueberries and citra hops, citra has lots of lemon flavors and mm -hmm. blueberries and lemons. Yeah, that lemon yeah. comes through like right there on the middle, almost on the middle of your palate. Like, man. Yeah, so you smell like the citra hops when you first mm -hmm. smell it, and then you get, and then you get the the grassy citra hops with the. A delicious blueberry wine. This is I call this my blueberry Beaujolais because it's, like, <laughs> it's got tannin from the skin contact from the blueberries, yep. and um, and then that grape kind of all just that ten percent grape kind of rounds it all out together. Yeah. So that's my crushable wine, blueberry wine. <laughs> that one's uh, that one's dangerous for sure. <laughs> this is. Uh, another kind of core item for us is this fusion rhubarb. This is one of our first sour ciders we ever made. Is this the one that, did we get this from you last time? I think or so, or you might have had rhubarb maple. So we also aged it in a maple syrup bourbon barrel. No, it was this one. Okay, yeah, because of rhubarb and blueberry. Yep. So yeah, since we're a blueberry farm, this says TTB makes you do a, a straight composition of what is exactly in it. So this is it says rhubarb blueberry grape cider. So it's about eight and a half percent. The blueberries on the hops you just had is nine and a half percent, just to give you guys some idea of where the ABV falls. Most of our stuff falls between eight and ten, I would say, or seven and ten. Yeah. House cider usually starts at seven, but we also make another version of house cider that's nine and a half. That we <laughs> What's the highest you've ever made? At 14, I know we have a couple things at 14 and a half. We our Sizer collab with Alchemy um, okay. Herbal Wine is 14 and a half. Our the first time we ever made Muscadine wine was 14 and a half because <laughs> our neighbors were like, "Come pick these Muscadines," and the bricks were already like through the roof, and so we just it was more of an experiment, but it turned out really good. Yeah, and uh, could not tell it was 14 and a half percent. It was. <laughs> scary and dangerous but we made it again and picked the grapes on time and and it turned out to be eight percent so um so this is sour rhubarb and then we also had once a year this comes out in a seasonal in a maple syrup bourbon barrel just for fun uh, i love that one this is definitely one of my favorites yeah because this was um uh, because the other the maple bourbon or I always maple like tongue tie, yeah, maple <laughs> syrup, bourbon barrel. Bourbon maple syrup, barrel. Yeah, say that ten times fast, I dare you. People are always like, they age maple syrup in bourbon barrels? I'm like, apparently they do. Yeah, I had no They're color. kind of rare and hard to find. My husband kind of specializes in finding rare, hard to find barrels. We use um, sea salt barrels, bourbon sea salt barrels. Um, and that's, we do like our version of like a Goza cider in those. And we have Sauterne barrels, which are pretty hard to find. Um, we have a cider called Pardon My French that we age in Sauterne barrels in bottle condition. And that's going to come back out again in February, and it's okay. delicious. It's <laughs> one of my favorites. Yeah, I think what was uh, the Goza like one? I think you brought that last time, didn't you? Yes, it was strawberry, cucumber, basil. Yeah, salt that one was barrel. rad. That was super cool. It's like, it's like eating a garden or something. Yeah, like for real. <laughs> And then the other one, was the other one, I don't know if you have it with you today, the, uh, oh, it was the one, I think it was just called Cider with Hops, and it was like a, it was almost like a nice Sauvignon Blanc. Yes, actually, yeah, I do have it with yeah. you, but because you tried it, I didn't bring it out. Yeah, no, it's fine. <laughs> but that one was amazing, and I, was, I actually, like, sold quite a bit of those based off just calling it a Sauvignon Blanc. Nice, I know, because later <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't like hops, and I'm like, oh, 
you haven't had this. Yeah. <laughs> you need to try it. What, it was really interesting. Yeah, I had a lady that she, uh, she came in and she was like, oh, I only drink Sauvignon Blanc. And I was like, well, I have a cider that's like pretty much that. And she was like against it. And she's like, no, I don't, I don't think so. And I was just like, I'll pay for the bottle if you don't like it. And then like she tasted it and then she thought I had like switched out. She refused to believe it was a cider. Wow. Yeah. That's she was just like, awesome. yeah. So it was really rad. And I was just like, cool. Like, <laughs> so, you know, listen to your bartenders and those that, you know, make it, we know what we're talking about. <laughs> They taste a lot of stuff. Yeah. There's a lot of not good stuff. Our palates are better than yours. <laughs> we tell you what you like. Yeah. <laughs> so the next one I'm going to pour is our Fusion Blackberry. So back to the Fusion series, which has the 10% grape and a little bit of blueberry. And this is um, over a pound of whole... Hendersonville blackberries in this bottle. So we also enjoyed this wine here. Yeah. And this is about nine and a half percent. So whole blackberries are just dumped into the tank of apple cider, co-fermented all together, and you get the skin contact. And blackberries are super funky. Um, so there's actually a second wild strain coming through with whatever uh, yeast is on the blackberries. That's why we also like using whole fruit a lot because you can get like a second kind of wild mm -hmm. uh, ferment going on. And uh, this is one of my favorites. It drinks a lot like, it's like a funky, um, almost somebody somebody else today said this, and I, I've always thought this, <laughs> but somebody else confirmed, was like, this is like a Pinot Noir with some funk, like reminds me of like an Oregon Pinot, but then, you know, it's, it's tartar and it's more sour, so. It really does, yeah, I think definitely the, like, that mouthfeel for sure. Like. Blackberries, I think, are the closest phenolic. They have the most com compounds similar to grapes. Yeah. So they make a really good, like, wine type uh, fruit wine. We make 100% blackberry fruit wine that we just sell in the tasting room because it's, it's it's a lot takes a lot of blackberries and. Yeah. I was gonna say like, so what what was our system again? Like, how big? Like, kind of operation. We have five 265 gallon tanks. Okay. Um, so pretty small little tanks, um, or a thousand liters is what it is what it transfers to. Mm -hmm. And then we have how many? I think we have 12 barrels now. We started with eight. Now we've moved up to 12. We added a third rack, so we have we just take a ladder. We don't have a forklift. <laughs> we have no machines. No forklift. No forklift. Oh. Yeah, I was hoping to win one at auction today. Mystery Brewing did like an auction of all their stuff. Oh, today. I saw that. I was trying to look up some stuff. I think the there. forklift went for seven, which we just we just don't have it right now. <laughs> it would have been a nice thing to get. <laughs> we can just break into Fauna's like storage unit over here and we'll just <laughs> <laughs> I know. So now Never... we just climb ladders and yeah. <laughs> we just use strong men to move these barrels up the third rack because they're super high now. Because yeah. our winery is super tight. It's super tiny but super tall. So we can gotcha. go we can go up. So, I mean, that, that would be the next step maybe to get like a little bit bigger fermenter and just go up, and right. like skinny and up. And, um, and yeah, I bet you I could do some really cool things if y'all got like a fooder or one of those things. I mean, I know they're like stupid expensive, but yeah, like, no, I, I really definitely cool. have dreams of a fooder. But yeah, they take up a lot of room, the fooders. They do, so they really do. That's yeah. another thing. We're actually working on getting some more just storage space so we can, because we store all of our wine in our winery. So we have all these pallets of wine. So if we can get those out and uh, get some more storage space permitted, then we have some more room to, Sweet. to play around with stuff like fooders. <laughs> Uh, this is the El Drake, um, named after Sir Francis Drake. He was the first uh, human to write down the first cocktail ever made, which was a mojito, lum, a rum, lime, mint. He wrote it in his captain journals, and somebody found it, and so this is like our tribute to Sir Francis Drake. And so you've got Drake on the bottle here, you got a little Drake, Drake, <laughs> a little lime, a little mint from Botanist's Garden. And a little barrel because this is a rum barrel. So this is a rum barrel aged cider that we infused with a little bit of lime and zest and mint from our garden. And this is nine and a half percent. It was aged for three months in rum barrels. 
and which I, I it's a perfect amount of time. We don't like the barrel to overtake the cider. Cider is very delicate, mm -hmm. like wine, and so we usually don't go much longer than three or four months when we're barrel aging, typically. Now, when we start using more neutral barrels, then we can we'll go a lot longer. Well, but okay. for spiritus barrels, because they're pretty strong, we usually don't go much longer than that. But we we just taste, 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 and decide when to pull pull out the cider. <clears throat> Have you ever noticed any like? color changes from the barrel itself because I know with like you know like bourbons and stuff obviously it goes in clear it comes up brown or mm -hmm. any of those huh. have you ever had like any of that like color yeah I mean I think some of it like our tequila barrel aged and our bourbon barrel are probably a little bit more golden in color mm -hmm. than our regular cider for sure and then you know we don't filter or anything so they're like lazy so sometimes you'll have a little bit of a sediment in the bottle which is very good for you it's all it good stuff um, it's just it's more flavor. <laughs> but if you don't want or it, you can you collect can. it and make so it you can, yeast starter. You can shake it up and drink it like that, or you can just make sure you you keep it pretty. I used to upright. do that. I used to. Like, I love shaking like yeah, getting I, like I the yeast it in really it. It like, gets more flavor that yeah. way. Like this this rhubarb right now has got a little bit of yeast in yeah. there. And uh, I think yeah, it's awesome. I mean, it's the same way of like I think what a lot of kombuchas like have a lot of like the yeast and stuff still in there or you know yeah it's great for it's, you it's so probiotic yeah it is uh it's really good for you it's alive because we're not pasteurizing it's alive and mm -hmm. delicious and so you can be doing a little bit good good while you're being bad <laughs> <laughs> drinking some high alcohol uh cider it's true we also technically have no sugar no carbs uh so it's better for you in Obviously, gluten-free for all y'all that are... And the last cider of the day I'm going to pour you guys... Well, if you guys were here, I'd, I'd pour you some. Yeah, too bad. But just Cameron. Just me. Gets in <laughs> <laughs> this is our Muscadine cider that we call Good Neighbors because this was kind of a fun experimental cider we made a small batch of last year. And our neighbors were like, oh... You want these muscadines? Yeah, we don't do anything when they're just falling down. So come get them. So we went and got them. That's when we made that really high alcohol uh, muscadine cider that was about 14.5% that you could not tell. <laughs> and uh, I still have one bottle of that left. And I'm like, what am I going to do again? <laughs> it's like, down it and you feel pretty good. And uh, But this one's 8%, so <laughs> it's a little bit more where we should be at <laughs> if the muscadines we picked at the right time and not at the end of the harvest when the bricks were really high and the sugar was really high so so that makes a pretty big difference like is yeah, that the we, same with like apples or any of the like, yes fruits? yes exactly same with apples in the um last year we did that's actually why we have two different house ciders so we've got oh. emanation apple which is our seven percent cider which i also call house cider but then we accidentally made a cider that was nine and a half percent, and by law, if you vary within two percent, you have to get a new label. So oh, we, really? So we created a new label that just said house cider for the higher alcohol house cider, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, because it was made with late season apples last year, and we didn't, you know, we're still in our, we're only a year and a half old, so we're still learning, so we didn't, mm -hmm. we didn't factor in the, the, the extra sugar in the apples. Oh yeah, a little bit later season. I mean, that's yeah, that's one of those things because I know like a lot of times because uh, I've seen it some ciders. There was one, and I think it was like Norway. Uh, what they would do is they they would lay the cider on like tarps and let it sit outside for a few days and get to that point right before it like mm. goes bad, I guess. Yeah. And then they would process it just to get as much sugar as possible. Interesting. But this yeah. is like a home brewery cider, so you know. Like, I also yeah. don't know the laws in Norway, but what's yeah. the what's the highest percentage you can say? Is it? I know beer is fifteen. Oh, that we can go? Yeah, because I'm cider and wine. Yeah, we can't be right? over sixteen. I think. Oh, really? Sixteen or okay. seventeen, but I think it's sixteen. There might be sixteen and a half, or yeah. something like that. But um, yeah, I don't. I think we made something that was fifteen and a half. I can't remember what it was. It was some small batch thing, but yeah, <laughs> out to the public, fourteen and a half is the highest, and it's been that muscadine. Yeah. From last year, which the, the new one is not that. So <laughs> don't get excited. But, <laughs> but um, and then the sizer, which you can buy, which is like our only sizer, is when you make a mead, but with apples. 
So we made a kind of a cocktail, like kind of like similar to the, the Drake, where it's like a one and done cocktail, or you can add, you know, the Drake, you can add some dark rum to that, and it's put pour over ice, and it's a perfect like craft cocktail without really muddling all the mint and going to all the yeah. trouble of squeezing the lime and muddling <laughs> the mint and adding the simple syrup and all that stuff. So um, it's really fun. Yeah, I was talking, I was talking to somebody, uh, okay. uh, some of my friends on at the Homers. I was talking about some of your guys' stuff. I was like, man, that would be perfect. Like, you literally just add it in there with, like, a splash of rum or something else. Like, nice. whatever. Uh, I don't know. I'm a rum drinker. Yeah. I'm not doing cider or beer. But, uh, so yeah, I think that, like, that would be awesome in it. Like, especially a lot of these, like, you could definitely do, um, like, cocktails and stuff like that. Like, yeah, and um, plus our ciders are still, so the bartenders really like yeah. that because the bubbles aren't going to go away and they can use it again. And they actually, natural wine typically lasts longer when they're when something's not manipulated and doesn't have a lot of additives and things um, and it's natural I it has a, typically has like a longer shelf life even after you know it's open mm -hmm. so our ciders can last a little bit longer than most wines or cider and plus they're still so the yeah. sour ones just get a little more sour and <laughs> I like that. which is even better <laughs> like I mean honestly like I'm not yeah. going to complain about sour. Yeah, I'll so. drink any of my sour ciders a week, yeah. two weeks later. I'm like, oh, still good. It's <laughs> great. <laughs> Worst case, yeah. it gets more funky. <laughs> well, thanks, Cam, for uh, having me. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks yeah. for uh, going through all that. I know it was quite a few ciders <laughs> um, and wines and stuff. So uh, I hope it's you guys... It's time Facebook live -ing. Yeah, oh, so <laughs> hope you all uh, definitely enjoyed it. Show some love. Um, Definitely to Amy, let her know how she did. If she was terrible, keep it to yourself. She wasn't. She was great. We all know it. So, uh, once again, thanks for tuning in to Nook Talk. Uh, um, we do have some of these. I like that Nook Talk. Yeah. Cute. I thought it was good. Am I your first Nook Talk? You are. You are. I've did like videos by myself and like nothing with anybody That's before. Cool. That's so, awesome. Yeah. So, well, I'm really excited you. for our first official one. <laughs> yes. So, uh, so yeah, hopefully y'all enjoyed it. Um, once again, we will have some of these here. We do have the, the blackberry sour on tap. Uh, not quite yet, but very, very, very soon. Um, uh, and then yeah, stay tuned. And if There'll you don't, there'll be some Drake here. That's true. Try. Yep. That one is really amazing. Like she said, some Basque wild fermented ciders in his box today. <laughs> so yeah, get excited about those. Definitely come in and try them out guys. Um, and also, if you don't follow Botanist and Barrel on Facebook, Instagram, all the things. Do you have Instagram? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Okay, there you go. We have a very cool, like, I love my husband does a good job. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> We've been trying to improve on that for ourselves. So, uh, yeah. It'll work. Definitely follow them on there. Share, like. That goes a long way, especially for us small businesses. Um, you would be surprised. Yeah, and come see our winery. Come out to the farm. We're doing our first uh, beer festival this year. Oh, cool. It's going to be okay. called um, Funk Down on the farm and we're gonna have about 15 different breweries oh uh, sweet okay so we'll have Kemp Falls we'll have Zillicoa from Asheville we'll nice. have um, some Charlotte breweries Wind Robot Resident Culture uh, some Raleigh Durham breweries Dirty Bull uh, I don't know we've got got a lot of fun yeah kind of smaller I'll definitely have to make that. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Breweries. Yeah, yeah, and we'll probably have a little after party for the industry. <laughs> that'd be cool. Pick <laughs> up a lamb, pig, something. Oh a little yeah. Camp in action. <laughs> That's always the best part. The stuff you don't get invited to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in and uh, come and check them out. Awesome. Thanks. Peace. <laughs>